Structural, institutional, and systemic racism broadly refer to the system of structures that have procedures or processes that disadvantage racial minorities and particularly black people. It refers to the rules, practices, and customs once rooted in law with residual effects that reverberate throughout society, each with their own nuances. A good example of systemic racism is redlining, a system once used by banks and the real estate industry that literally outlined the neighborhoods where people of color lived in red ink. If you lived inside of the red lines, loans were considered risky and banks were less likely to give loans or even invest. The practice was banned in 1968, but the impacts live on, preventing black families from amassing wealth at the same rate as their white neighbors on the other side of that red line. Need proof? According to the Federal Reserve, the net worth of a typical white family is $171,000. That's 10 times greater than that of a black family. Homes in black neighborhoods are generally and historically worth less than white homes because the developers and businesses that make a neighborhood, well, a neighborhood, are less likely to be there. That means the tax base is lower too, which has a trickle-down effect. Less tax dollars for schools means fewer kindergarten classes, fewer qualified teachers, fewer AP classes. That leads to lower graduation rates from high school and even fewer graduates from college. This is in part caused by the school to prison pipeline that disproportionately impacts people of color. Institutional racism is more narrowly defined as the overt and covert forces blocking people of color from accessing the same opportunities as white people. Many of these children may benefit from additional educational and counseling services. Instead of getting the help they need, they're isolated, punished, or incarcerated. Once you have a criminal record, it invades all aspects of your life. Getting everything from a job to an apartment becomes that more difficult. Many people believe their communities are over-policed, presumed to be overly dangerous, but consider this. Black and brown people account for 30% of the U.S. population, but account for 43% of people killed by police and more than half of the incarcerated population. Institutional racism goes beyond just serving time. Something as simple as hair can be used to discriminate. Rules at school and the workplace that don't allow for dreadlocks, cornrows, and braids, they discriminate and don't take into consideration hair texture and singles out people based on their physical trait, creating rules where rules aren't needed, rules that control people of color. So, who gets to make all of these rules in society? Since America was colonized, it's been white people who've made these rules. First with slavery, then Jim Crow laws and separate but equal rules, and even creating limits on who can immigrate into the country. The term given to define that power, white privilege. It refers to white historical and contemporary advantages in access to quality education, decent jobs, a livable wage, home ownership, retirement benefits, and wealth, regardless of socioeconomic status.